the average American now eats 153 pounds of sugar per year, whether they know it or not. I want to talk about some hidden problems in probably your favorite snacks that you may not know are there. Now, first off, my favorite topic, lectins. Many of your favorite snack foods, particularly if they're grain-based, are probably loaded with lectins. Just remember that lectins are part of the plant defense system against being eaten. And lectins are proteins that are really good at promoting leaky gut. That's intestinal permeability. And leaky gut is one of the biggest drivers of inflammation. So one of the ways to keep inflammation subsided is not so much eating anti-inflammatory foods, whatever that means, but eating foods that don't promote leaky gut. And first and foremost is lectins in these snack foods. So anytime you are looking at a snack, if it's got a grain product, whether it's wheat, rye, barley, oats, corn, then it almost certainly has lectins in them. It doesn't matter whether it says organic or all natural, the lectins are in there. Now, too many lectins can cause low energy, weight gain, pain, and so much more. Now, a lot of the foods in my no list are notorious for containing lectins, like legumes, like grains, like nightshades. You can detoxify a lot of these by peeling and de-seeding them, or pressure cook if you must eat them. But a word of warning, pressure cooking does not destroy the lectin gluten in wheat, rye, barley, and oats. Okay, number two, this should come as no surprise, but there's sugar most likely in your favorite snack food. The average American now eats 153 pounds pounds of sugar per year, whether they know it or not. And that's because a lot of the snack foods that you're eating that are loaded with sugar don't necessarily taste sweet. In fact, sadly, a piece of bread has four teaspoons of sugar per slice. So if you're having a healthy, organic, whole wheat sandwich, Believe it or not, you're having eight teaspoons of sugar just off the bat. It's in everything else. It's in salad dressings. It's in sauces. It's in condiments. It's in fruit juice. It's in most yogurts. You name it, it's there. Now, why is it so bad? There's nothing intrinsically bad about sugar, except, unfortunately, the bad bugs in your gut think sugar is absolutely delicious, and the more you eat of it, the more they actually tell your brain to find more. The bad news is that the good guys, the gut buddies, can't utilize that sugar. They can't get to it. The bad guys take it long before the good guys see it. So you overpopulate your gut with the bad guys and you starve the good guys to death. And that's one of the huge drivers of what's making us all so sick. Now, sugar has lots of names besides sugar. Coconut sugar, sorry, it's sugar. Agave, sorry, it's sugar. Honey, sorry, it's sugar. High fructose corn syrup, the list goes on and on. Now, how do you know how much sugar is in your product. Do not look at the label under sugar. Do not look at the label saying added sugars. Look at total carbohydrates. It'll have grams. Right underneath it will be fiber. Take the total carbohydrates, take away the fiber, you can't digest that. That will give you the total grams of sugar in that product. Now, for getting your head around that, there's four grams of carbohydrate 
in a teaspoon of sugar. So take that number of carbohydrates that you just calculated, divide by four, and that'll tell you how many teaspoons per serving you're eating of sugar. And when you do that, I guarantee you it will blow you away how much sugar you're actually eating in those healthy snack foods. Well, okay, then maybe artificial sweeteners are the way to go. Please don't go running for those products just yet. They might be missing sugar, but they're loaded with gut-killing ingredients. Saccharin, aspartame, sucralose. These are equally as poisonous for two reasons. Number one, you have no sugar receptors on your tongue. You have sweet receptors. In fact, two-thirds of your taste buds are sweet receptors. They're there to tell your brain that you just ate fruit, which was the only source of sugar long ago, and that sugar is on the way, and your brain should tell your pancreas to make insulin to handle that sugar. And when you taste sweet things that aren't sugar, that insulin actually lowers your blood sugar and your brain goes, what the heck? You got cheated. Sugar didn't arrive. Go back and find some more and keep doing it until you found some. Now, when I was a Diet Coke addict and I used to drink eight Diet Cokes a day, I was fat because I was always hungry because my brain told me to go find more. Now, what I didn't know is that the sucralose in Diet Coke was actually killing my gut microbiome, as was the saccharin, as was the aspartame. And so I was, you know, the worst possible case of what these artificial sweeteners do to me. In fact, a 2007 Duke University study showed that one packet of Splenda, sucralose, kills off 50% of your gut bacteria. And you want your gut bacteria, believe me. These products promote weight gain by making you go find more to eat. And sadly, these products have been linked to Alzheimer's disease, to cancer. So just beware of snacks that say sugar-free or diet. Now, I should mention that my favorite non-caloric sweetener is allulose, non-GMO allulose. Allulose is actually a true sugar. There's nothing artificial about it. And it's actually the first sweetener that the FDA has declared is a prebiotic, meaning it feeds friendly bacteria. So it's a win-win. And there's actually been couple human studies showing that it induces weight loss rather than weight gain. All right, what else is in your snacks? I guarantee you there is probably one or more vegetable oils that you don't want in your snack. Now, a lot of these are also well hidden. It may say vegetable oil. It may say sunflower oil, safflower oil, grapeseed oil, cottonseed oil, soybean oil, the list goes on and on. All of these are actually mostly high omega-6 fat oils. Now, you may remember there's omega-3 fats and omega-6 fats, and both are actually essential. Essential means we need them but we can't manufacture them, so we have to acquire them from our diet. Unfortunately, we have so much omega-6 oil in our diet now that the ratio between omega-6 fats and omega-3s, which is usually three parts omega-6 to one part omega-3 in a natural environment, now we have anywhere from 20 to 50 times more omega-6 than omega-3 in our diet. So what does that mean? It means that our mitochondria, which need a balance of both, are overwhelmingly now subjected to these 
polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are omega-6s. And as I've written about in Gut Check, and you'll see in my upcoming book, The Gut-Brain Paradox, that it's the short-chain omega-3 fats, like alpha-linolenic acid, that are paramount in protecting your brain health. In fact, listen to my recent episode with Dr. Kate Shanahan, on the dangers of these high omega-6 PUFAs. We actually do a really deep dive into it. So what snacks have these? Virtually everything. So please read the label carefully. And if you see these vegetable oils, really stay away, particularly if they show up high on the list of ingredients. What else is in your snack? More than likely, if it has grain products, glyphosate. Now, glyphosate is the active ingredient in Roundup. As many of you know, it interferes with the shikimate pathway. And the shikimate pathway is actually how plants produce proteins. But unfortunately, bacteria also use the shikimate pathway. And we now know that glyphosate independently causes leaky gut. It independently kills off the tryptophan pathway-producing bacteria in our gut. And the tryptophan pathway makes serotonin the feel-good hormone. And is it any wonder that we have this incredible epidemic of anxiety and depression, thanks in part to glyphosate killing off these good bacteria? Glyphosate impacts mitochondrial function. Because guess what? Mitochondria are actually engulfed bacteria. Now, the World Health Organization has classified glyphosate as a carcinogen. And there are currently multiple billion-dollar lawsuits against glyphosate for multiple cancers. 70% of our agricultural crops are sprayed with Roundup. And so seeing the word non-GMO has nothing to do with whether there's Roundup in your food. Now, the sad thing is Roundup doesn't have to appear on the label because it's approved as safe by the FDA. Guess what? More than 80% of Americans and 87% of our children have large amounts of glyphosate in our urine. So what can you do? Well, buy organic always. But that's not a guarantee because multiple organic out products, as tested by Consumer Reports and the Environmental Working Group, test positive for glyphosate, even though they're organic. And that's because glyphosate is sprayed on fields, and glyphosate can drift from one field over to an organic field. So just be cautious. Artificial coloring. Artificial coloring is used in candy, sport drinks, and baked goods. They're actually in certain brands of pickles, smoked salmon, and salad dressing. The most common are red dye number 40, yellow dye number 5, and yellow 6. These have been linked to ADHD in children and even cancer. Interesting, brain imaging has actually revealed that red dye 40 can dramatically affect brain function. Finally, forever chemicals. You're now learning about PFASs. These are a class of 15,000 chemicals that are used to make products resistant to water stains and heat. They're called forever chemicals because they do not naturally break down. Sadly, they're linked to cancer, liver problems, thyroid issues, birth defects, kidney disease, decreased immunity, and other serious health problems. New research has shown that diets rich in forever chemicals, such as processed meats and butter, will likely increase levels of toxic PFAAs in human blood over time. Also, Research has shown that these higher PFAA blood levels are among those people who consume carryout or food prepared at restaurants. So my advice, buy organic, cook at home. If you take something out from a restaurant that is in a plastic container, please, please, please put it on glass or ceramic before reheating it because the forever chemicals are in that 
fast food. Finally, new 5GC. I've talked a lot about this before. New 5GC is a sugar molecule in beef, lamb, pork, and milk. It's not in fish. It's not in chicken. It's not in shellfish. New 5GC is viewed as an inflammatory molecule by our immune system. And if you've read Gut Check or even The Plant Paradox, you know that new 5GC is mischievous for heart health, for brain health, for even cancer. The good news is that if you buy fermented sausages or fermented dairy products, the new 5GC is eaten by bacteria. But in general, you're much better off buying pastured chicken or wild fish or wild shellfish as your meats of choice. More amazing episodes just like this one. Watch now. Even snacks made with compliant ingredients like sorghum flour, like cassava, other flours can actually wreak havoc on your health if you go crazy.